Moana Mackey. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I'd also like to join with my colleagues from around the House in, in um, paying my condolences to the people of Christchurch uh, for what they continue to endure, um, to all the workers in Christchurch who are, who are helping those families, to all the volunteers who are heading there again. And I see Federated Farmers and the student volunteers are arranging to go back, and also to our Christchurch colleagues um, from all around the House who I know are working very hard to make sure that their constituents, constituents are best... Uh, um, um, are looked after as, as they best possibly can. Um, Mr Speaker, that, well, that was an extraordinary contribution from, from the Honourable Tim Grocer. And Jonathan Coleman says it's great, but it, it was very telling, because if, if there was ever a demonstration of just how out of touch this government is on the cost of living and the impact on Kiwi families, it was that speech. What a load of bureaucratic gobbledygook. Well, he's standing here talking about, you know, the structural imbalances and the unsustainable requirements. People cannot put food on the table. They cannot keep a roof over their heads. And they cannot buy for their children what they could three, four, five years ago. That is the reality. And maybe if National Party ministers and our Prime Minister visited a food bank once in a while, we would not continue to be subjected to these offensive speeches which say that it's, 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 it's all the unemployed's fault that they're unemployed, and, and we'll just bring in tougher welfare measures because what they need is a kick in the pants, that's what Paula Bennett and John Key said, instead of accepting the reality that for two and a half years our government has done nothing. Our government has no plan for dealing with the recession. Our government has no plan for helping families cope with the spiralling cost of living. And I thought it was, it was very interesting when he talked about, um, the, the average, about averages and the average wage. And, of course, the reason why uh, the, 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 the average income has gone up is because poor people have lost their jobs and wealthier people have gotten even more wealthy. So that's why the average has gone up. I mean, the National Party continues to defy the laws of mathematics. When Labor was in government, we had, at one point, the lowest unemployment in the world. And that meant we had a number of people who came into the workforce, and a lot of them were on lower-paid jobs, low incomes. So we had more people employed, they had jobs, but yes, the average was slightly lower because there were so many more people employed, and a lot of them were on low incomes. So the National Party is now saying, let's just get all low-income people out of work. Let's just, I think we're now seeing the plan. We're seeing the plan. Just let's leave, get, just leave, leave John Key with a job. That's right. If we only had John Key, if the only person in New Zealand that had a job was John Key, then our average wage would be in the millions, the tens of millions. So this is the National Party's plan. And it, it, it really worries me deeply that they continue to stand up and say that this is a good thing, whilst ignoring the fact that more and more New Zealanders are unemployed, more and more New Zealanders cannot cope with the current costs of living. And, and Tim Grosser, who said, well, you know, Labor can always find a case study to wave around. I could find thousands of case studies to wave around because, you know, I actually visit my food banks and my budget advisory services. And when it comes to the budget advisory service in Gisborne, they are so overrun at the moment that they are actually having to meet people in the hallway. They do not have enough space in their offices to meet with people um, because of how difficult it is and because of some of the, the changes that the Minister has made, which are just, are just ridiculous, with no extra funding. She promised all this extra funding. Well, they haven't seen any yet. And I want to tell you, Mr Speaker, about one case that I heard, which I thought really summed up how dire things are for so many of our families. And this is a case of a solo mother in Gisborne. Um, who work and income made an error and they put more money into her account than she was actually entitled to. Now, in a rush of blood to the head, and she shouldn't have done this, she went out and she spent the money. She then came back to budget advisory in tears, saying that she knew that she was going to have to pay that money back. She was upset that she'd done that, but it wasn't often that she had money in her account at all, and so this, this was, um, you know, and she acknowledged that she, she'd made a mistake. So they managed to sort that out. Well, the budget advisory went around to see her. Do you know what she'd spent that extra money on? non-perishable food. She'd stocked her pantries. She didn't spend it on alcohol. She didn't spend it on cigarettes like the National Party would have us believe. She didn't spend it on going out. She saw an opportunity for the first time to fill her cupboards with non-perishable food. When food becomes a luxury in New Zealand, that is a sad, sad day.
The Honourable Jonathan Coleman. Mr Speaker, I just want to join with colleagues in uh, extending my condolences to the people of Canterbury at this time. It's a very tough uh, period that people are going through down there and, as the Prime Minister said on Monday, the New Zealand Government and people, members right across the House, are, are firmly behind people in Christchurch and Canterbury and that uh, city has a great future which will come and will be fully supported by this Government. But, Mr Speaker, isn't it great to have New Zealand's favourite political punching bag, Phil Goff, back in the country, fresh back from my big fat Greek wedding, where, uh, knowing that the Leader of the Opposition Point tends to believe... Honourable Trevor Mallard. <laughs> Mr Speaker, I take offence of that term, that reference, uh, to a member's family. Well... I'll hear what the member has to say. There is no intended reference to the member's family, and that member knows that that's not intended. Order, order. Then we won't going to be. I've, my concern about this is I don't want to be endlessly ruling out. Uh, you know, I didn't believe it was a nasty comment. I, this, I forgive my. The member believes. Well, um, yeah, I hear plenty of order. Order. I think, I, think the, I think we must come to it. It's my fault that we've got to this stage, and I think it's, it's good advice that families should be kept out of. I, I think that is good advice. I'd ask the member to do that. The Honourable Jonathan Coleman. Uh, well, look, families were never included in that, quite frankly, but look, it's great to have the favourite punch bag back in the country, and the first thing he had to do when he got back here was start explaining his handling of recent political affairs. Explaining is losing, and that's what he's had to do. So that man... He's got the survival instincts of a lemming and the hunting instinct of a sheep. We had a fantastic zero budget, the first in 35 years, the first ever, and all Phil Goff can do is leave the country and as soon as he gets back, he has to start explaining. So this is a man who cannot ram home a political point. And these guys there, they think they're in touch with New Zealand. Well, I can tell you where I think the Labor Party has gone wrong, Mr Speaker. These people no longer are representative of what they take as their core constituency. Show me the person over there who has ever dug a drain, driven a bus or worked in a shop full time. They haven't. There's teachers, there's union hacks and activists. There's two business people there. But the point is, if they think they are in touch with the people in West Auckland, people in the Hutt Valley, the people in Pororua, they are sadly mistaken. And that, Mr Speaker, is where the Labor Party has gone wrong. The good news is there's absolutely no respite for them. I think they're going to be in that situation for a long, long time. The faces are down there. The next Labor Prime Minister, I don't think, is even in the, in the Parliament there, quite frankly. Now, Moana Mackey, she made some points before. She thinks that by going on and on saying that there is no plan, the public of New Zealand are going to believe them. Well, I can say that List MP, a person without constituents, I don't think she would understand what's happening out there in New Zealand, because New Zealanders get it. They know there's a difficult financial situation this government has had to deal with, and as my colleague Tim Gross has said, we have had to make some real changes that are going to be better for the long-term future of New Zealand. And if you want a, you know, something to sum it up, next year we're halving the deficit, the year after that we're halving it again, and then it's gone. So by 2014, three countries in the world will be back in surplus in the Western world. It will be us, Australia and Korea. And these guys, if they get in, I can tell you, they will continue to roll out the unfunded promises. They will continue to borrow. The surplus will be higher. The debt level will be higher. And basically, our children will be paying for it forever. And I hope Bill Goff did learn one thing in Greece, because what he might have learned, because he is very much influenced by the last person he's ever talked to, is that borrowing and borrowing and never paying back the debt doesn't work. It doesn't work. At the end of the day, it means that countries go bankrupt. And if you look at a financial illiterate like Trevor Mallard, who criminally was an associate minister of finance, if that man ever gets his hands back on the books order, again... Order. No, we're not going to have criminally used uh, in relation to a member. Uh, the member needs to be more cautious than that. Uh, Jonathan Coleman. Mr Speaker, uh, I think you'll appreciate the subtlety of that term. I wasn't suggesting that despite being in court, he is a criminal. Order. Mr Speaker, this is the second time when you've ruled against that member where he has commented on your rulings. And you know that that is against standing orders and, and uh, lacks a bit of taste as well. The order, we don't need to... 
that, that the member's point of order was fine until that last point, but uh, I, the member shouldn't be commenting on, on a ruling. I mean, uh, the, the context of referring to some, another member behaving criminally, I accept there may be different contexts, but it is simply uh, not allowed in this House to refer to another member behaving that way. And the member must not comment on that. Donald Jonathan Cole. Well, sometimes there's a point in distinguishing between the metaphorical and the literal. But what is literal in this case is that Labor do not have a plan to get New Zealand out of debt. They do not. And if they do, let the next Labor speaker get up and lay it out, because it has to be more than taking GST off fruit and vegetables. That is not going to cut it. And I can tell you, these guys, they've spent way too much time in the Beltway. And when they do occasionally get out, they go and talk to party activists. And that's where they get all their information from. But if they actually get out and speak to people in the real New Zealand, they will say, yep, it is tough economic times. But we can see that John Key has the plan to get New Zealand ahead. And as I tell you, half the deficit next year, half the year after. Then it's gone. You saw those Treasury predictions. If anyone doubts the Treasury, I can tell you they are the most conservative economic people you will ever meet. And if, if you look at what we're doing, if you look at the initiatives that are happening around the Convention Centre, a thousand permanent jobs, there's a clear plan there. New Zealand's in the right direction. Kiwis, I reckon, will continue to put their trust in John Key and the National League Government. Before I call the next member, senior members should know they don't say you do this and you do that. Members have been in the House some time should know that, unless they don't know what they're saying. Uh, Jacinda Ardern. Thank you, Mr.